I always find scary movies when they're set in a period more exciting because your imagination has to go somewhere. It's so fun to see a world without cell phones and without computers. The whole meaning of production design is to create an atmosphere in which the events take place. And then another aspect is to create a specific kind of understanding of the characters. Patty Podesta was our art director, and she made this entire world feel lived in. And as a result, it really kind of nailed home what it was like growing up in the 70s. The 70s in Denver, Scott lived there as a boy. And a lot of the particularities of the set design and the story come from his memories of it. I'm actually wearing my authentic 70s ditto chants today. 70s is kind of like my vibe anyways. And so for me, it's just kind of like living my dream costume world. The clothes are really cool. I like the jeans because it makes me feel taller. The 1970s, it's just a cooler time. He had to have lots of fabulous hair. 70s hairstyles, especially like we're in 78, so it's more fluffy, it's more lived in, it's not that kind of like stringy, grimy, like 60s kind of feeling. And we have such great characters that we can develop such great hairstyles around. Like with Gwen, we really focus on braids that she can do herself. You don't think they're gonna find them, do you? Not how they want to. Finny's got a nice little shag moment going on. So it's a lot of fun shapes and textures that we're seeing. I would describe the overall aesthetic of the film as kind of a heightened naturalism. So it's grounded, but we pick moments to kind of elevate. You know, I wouldn't say it's hyper stylized, but it, we definitely try to give it an edge to create, you know, kind of a dynamic visual experience. When I first got the script, there weren't that many makeup effects in it. Scott, our director, changed his mind and decided all the ghost kids were going to be practical makeup effects. Everybody was really, really excited about it. The kids loved it. We were told multiple times that we're their, their favorite department to work with just because they got to, you know, play Halloween every day. Welcome to the basement. This is one of the main sets of the film where all of the horrific things happen. Meant to be a metaphysical space, an expressionistic space, where terror is present constantly. We came up with this idea of the rusty horizon that is, in a certain sense, a metaphor for the rip in the universe. When I first saw it, I was like, I'm excited to be kidnapped by Ethan Hawke in this basement. It was really cool, though, like the lights that kind of looked like those lights on battleships with like the metal cage around it, which is really creepy. And like the walls have like grimy stuff all over them. It's super creepy. I'll scream. If someone's upstairs, they'll hear me. No, he won't. No, with the door shut. And this is the black phone of the black phone. The black phone is, is awesome. I love this prop. Uh, we have about three of those. It's a period from the 70s. It's a pretty standard, like, black phone of that time. We currently have it hooked up to a system. It's called a Viking system. So the actor can make it ring and talk to Mason. You said my name was Billy. Don't call me that. I don't remember it. We hooked it up so that when we pick up this phone on the outside of the set, uh, the black phone inside will ring. Scott hired this amazing artist to do the masks, and it ended up being a large part of what I do in the movie. I'd kind of read it imagining the mask to be singular, and Scott devised this plan where sometimes it's this half is covered, sometimes it's this half, sometimes there's no mouth, sometimes there's no eyes. So the, the mask itself is working in this strange symbolic universe. This was the very first prototype we did. We did the smile first. The purpose of the expressions, like the frown, is when that's it, the kids are doomed. And this is to enchant them. They had to have horns. This is kind of like an outward sign of devil, evil. You know, that's the first thing you think of, you know. The mask was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Like, he'd look up to the darkness where the light was, and it was so creepy. That thing was so cool. And once I saw the masks, I realized that the masks were going to do a lot of the work for me. And I had to really let the masks carry the weight. 